The LM386 is a really cool little IC. It's the heart of uh, a lot of little audio amplifiers, and it's amazing because all you need is a couple of capacitors and a resistor, a speaker, and some power, and you're all set to uh, make a really nice sounding audio amplifier. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you, first of all, how to build a really basic amplifier with uh, the minimal parts, one resistor and two capacitors. Now I'm going to show you how to make a better sounding amplifier. And that's going to take some more capacitors, but it's pretty easy. And we're also going to add a bass boost control. So follow along and we'll get going here. I've got the LM386 inserted into my breadboard with pin 1 in the upper left hand corner. Now I'm going to bridge the power rails. So connect the positive rails on both sides and the negative rails on both sides. Now I'll take a jumper wire from pin 2 of the LM386 and connect it to ground. Now insert a 10k potentiometer somewhere into the breadboard. And connect a jumper wire from the middle pin of the potentiometer up to pin 3 of the LM386. Now connect pin 4 to ground. And one side of the potentiometer, connect that to ground. Now we're going to put a 10 ohm resistor from pin 5 of the LM386. Bring that to another rail in the breadboard. And you want to put a 0.1 microfarad capacitor from that resistor into the positive rail and then take the positive terminal of a 1000 microfarad electrolytic capacitor and insert it in between the resistor and the capacitor. Now you want to take the positive wire from your speaker and connect it to the negative terminal of that electrolytic capacitor. And then take the negative line of your speaker and connect it anywhere into the ground rail. Now we have to connect pin 6 of the LM386 to the positive rail. Alright, now we're ready to connect the input for the amplifier circuit. I've cut into an old pair of headphones from my iPhone to use the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And I have another blog post about this uh, on the website. Just look for it under the circuit section. So you want to connect the left or right audio channel into the third pin of the 10K potentiometer. And then the ground of the headphones into the ground rail of the circuit. And you can check my blog post on this tutorial. It'll have a better diagram. It's a lot easier to see what to do there. So now I'm going to connect this up to my iPhone. And play this little song I mixed up a while ago. And there's our volume control. And you can see it sounds pretty quiet. We don't have pin 1 or pin 8 uh, bridged together in the circuit, so the gain with this uh, setup is uh, only 20. Now if we want to make it a little louder, we can connect a wire between pin 1 and pin 8. And that'll make the gain 200. So you can see it's a lot louder. It's a little too loud. Got some distortion.
All right, well, that does it for the really basic audio amplifier. Let's try making one that sounds a lot better. So I'm starting out with an empty breadboard here. Uh, I just have the power, a 9-volt battery, connected up to one side of the breadboard. So I'm going to bridge the two power rails and connect uh, positive to positive and negative to negative. Now I'm going to insert the LM386 in there. I've got pin 1 in the upper left hand side. Now you want to connect pin 1 down to another rail somewhere in the breadboard. We're going to add our gain potentiometer to this. You want to connect that to the middle pin of the potentiometer. This is a 10k potentiometer. Now connect pin 2 of the LM386 to ground. Pin 3 goes to another rail in the breadboard. And we're going to want to put a 740 picofarad capacitor from that rail into ground. This is a decoupling capacitor. You can read more about that on the blog post. Now you want to take that same rail and then bring it down to another rail on the breadboard. This is where our volume control is going to go. This is another 10k potentiometer. So connect that to the middle pin of the potentiometer. And then take one of the outside pins of the potentiometer and wire it to ground. Now completing our gain control, we want to insert a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor from pin 8 of the LM386 up to another rail. And the negative side of the capacitor goes to the pin of the LM386. The positive side goes up to the other rail. Now take another jumper wire from that rail and connect it to one of the outside pins of your gain potentiometer. So now you want to insert a 10k ohm resistor from pin 7 of the LM386 and bring that down to another rail of the breadboard. Now we want to insert another capacitor from the end of that resistor into ground with the negative side of the capacitor going to the ground side, the positive side going to the resistor side. Now we need to wire pin 6 of the LM386 to the positive rail. And then we need to insert a 0.1 microfarad capacitor between pin 4 and pin 6. Kind of hard to get in here. With all these capacitors and wires, it's best to get them as close to the chip as possible to minimize noise and interference from radios and other stuff. Now insert a jumper from pin 5 down to another rail of the breadboard. And from there, insert a 10 ohm resistor Now insert a 0.1 microfarad capacitor at the end of that resistor into ground Now take a 1000 microfarad capacitor and insert the positive side into that rail with the resistor and the other capacitor and the negative side into another rail. Now we're going to add some decoupling capacitors for the power supply. So insert a 0.1 microfarad capacitor between the positive and negative power rails. And then insert another capacitor. Uh, this one's 100 microfarads in between the positive and negative power rails and make sure the polarity is correct for these capacitors. I had a tantalum capacitor explode on me the other day. That was not fun. I might make another video about that. Uh, 
I actually inserted it backwards and the thing blew up between my fingers and I got burned kind of bad. So try to avoid that if possible. Now we want to insert a jumper wire from pin four into ground. And we're ready to connect our speakers. So grab the positive wire of your speaker and insert it into that negative side of your 1000 microfarad capacitor. And then take the negative wire and insert that anywhere into the ground rail. Now that we have that, we're ready for the input. Now take either the left or right channel and wire it up to the remaining pin of your volume potentiometer. And then take the ground wire and connect it anywhere in the ground rail. Now we're ready to test it out. So I'll connect up my iPhone. And you can hear it's got a lot better sound than that first circuit we built. Plus we have a gain control and a volume control. I still have some distortion, but we can balance it out with the gain and the volume. All right, now let's add some bass control. I have another little mini breadboard over here with a 10K potentiometer inserted. So you want to connect a jumper wire from pin one of the LM386 up to an outer pin of the potentiometer. Now take the middle pin of the potentiometer and bring it down to another rail of the breadboard. And Insert a 0 0.033 microfarad capacitor from the end of that connection down to another rail of the breadboard. And then connect the other end of that capacitor over to pin 5 of the LM386. All right, now you can see adjusting the potentiometer has quite a good effect on the bass. It turns it up a lot. Uh, there's some distortion, but you know, if you fine tune the circuit, you can probably eliminate that. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, interference with uh, all of my long jumper wires here, and probably the connections of the breadboard aren't the best for this, uh, for getting the highest quality audio out of it, but.
Well, that's about it. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to subscribe to keep uh, updated on more videos coming out soon. Definitely going to be doing some more of these audio circuits. I might try a distortion, maybe like a tube amplifier sometime in the future. So keep updated with that. And have a good day. Bye-bye.